Well, hey, friends, welcome to the podcast. This is Rhonda. I have a special guest that I cannot wait for you to meet. Her name is Nancy Lynn Ruth. She is an EFT specialist. And not only is she an EFT specialist, but she specializes in using scientifically validated EFT, which we're going to learn about here in a minute. But she specializes in using that with business owners who are stuck or really feeling like they can't make good traction in their business. So I have been working with Nancy for quite some time. She has completely changed. Like I am not the same human as I was before I started working with her. The change has been remarkable, noticeable, and quite dramatic. So I really was so excited when she accepted my offer to join the podcast and come along for the ride. I want her to share more about what she does, how it works, why it works, et cetera. So I'm going to let you listen into our conversation. This is Nancy Lenneruth. Hey friends, welcome back to the podcast. As promised, I have an interview with my friend, Nancy Lenneruth. She's an EFT specialist and expert, and we are going to talk all things about the wild and woo-woo kind of EFT. <laughs> Nancy, hi, I'm glad you're here. Hi, Rhonda. Thank you for having me here. Of course. So I met Nancy through another coaching program that I'm in, and her name is All the Talk. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, you have to work with Nancy. You've got to work with Nancy as Nancy blushes for those of you that are listening and not watching. So she has made an incredible impact on me and the way that I really show up for my team in business, in life, personal financial, business, all the things that, you know, where you just get super stuck. And I guess I always think of EFT as like, if you have a fear of snakes, <laughs> all right. Oh my God. Well, yeah. I'm afraid of snakes. I, I should probably do some EFT to clear that fear of snakes out. But it wasn't really until I met Nancy that it occurred to me, or I had kind of the aha that this really could be used for anything known or unknown that might be preventing me from living my best life. So I'm not going to talk anymore. Nancy, <laughs> no one knows you. So let's okay. welcome Nancy. Tell me all about you. Well, thank you, Rhonda. All about me. Well, let me give you a quick background on me so people have an idea of where I come from. I actually went to Harvard Law School, became a lawyer, did that for nine years in Chicago. And then I was done. And I went back to school, got a master's in marriage and family therapy. And I was practicing therapy and it was good, except it wasn't quite the whole story. So I added a little coaching practice on the side. And what ended up happening is I'd learned about EFT tapping. When I was going to a training, one of the CEUs for my therapy practice, found out about it from one of these internationally known guys. And I figured, well, if he's recommending it, I can check it out. Brought it back to the therapy room. I actually had my first client. I said, hey, do you want to try this thing I just found out about yesterday? He said, sure. So I had him pick a memory, which he did, from when he was 12 years old. And I said, well, how do you feel about it today when you think about that memory? Well, I'm anxious. And he was. He was like gripping the arms of my chair. And on a scale of zero to 10, he gave himself an eight. I would have given him a 10, but he said eight. Okay. So knowing just a little bit from a 40-page PDF on tapping, I took him through the round of tapping. And I asked him after we were done, okay, same memory, same 0 to 10 scale, how anxious are you now? And I expected him to say, look, I'm still anxious. Can we do real therapy, Nancy? And instead, he kind of looked off in the distance and said, eh, it's just a memory. And I thought, oh, oh, my goodness. All right. So that's when I realized I had to learn about this. Aww. So I got some training in it. I started using it both in my therapy practice, but also in my coaching practice. And what I kept finding was I had coaching clients who had really important goals to them. They were really motivated to go after them and they weren't taking the action. They were getting stuck over and over again. So I brought in the tapping and what kept coming up were these unconscious subconscious blocks. Yeah, that with the tapping we could release, and then they could go after their big dreams, and it will. It became clear that that was what I was supposed to do. So I closed up the therapy practice and went full in working, and ultimately working with business owners. That was what attracted me to you because I thought, you know, as a business owner, we pull in personal. Personal is part of owning a business, right? And then there's the financial piece. And then there's an experience that you had as a child where somebody that you knew went out of business or like for me, my dad was in business, but he mm -hmm. didn't always manage business well and he worked a lot. And so it never occurred to me that all of those things 
could be impacting me today. I'm thinking I'm just fat, dumb, and happy rolling around doing my business thinking, well, why is it not this? Or why can I not reach this? And then when you and I started work together, it's like, oh, I kind of get this now. This is like a little puzzle that we have to sort of unwrap inside the body. But how does that thing happen in the body? Because I think this is all kind of woo-woo. I get it. And I'm woo-woo friendly and I love it. <laughs> okay. But explain to me and to anyone else listening or watching, how does EFT, how does this tapping thing even work in the body? Okay. So they've done the research and it has come up pretty positive. It's no longer woo-woo. Let's just put it that way. Yay! Um, so, I mean, I thought it was woo-woo when Yay. I started it, but I did it because it worked. This is mainstream woo-woo now. It's mainstream now. They have done all sorts of research. I've given CEU trainings on it for therapists. So I've actually looked into this. Tapping does a few things. These are acupoints. There's some of the same points as they are used in acupuncture, but you know, there's fewer of them and we don't use needles when we're doing tapping. But these points, when they're activated, either with a needle or tapping or rubbing, send a message to the amygdala, the mid part of the brain, in effect of safety and calm. So if you want to use the technical phrase, it down-regulates the amygdala. Yep. There are research studies that show that cortisol levels drop really fast. In fact, I've heard the guy who did the first one of those studies, he had to keep going back to the lab because they weren't giving him his results. If he finally got the head of the lab to get talk to him on the phone, and what had happened was the results looked so precipitous that the cortisol fell so fast and so far that the people doing the study said, this can't be right. We must have screwed it up because wow. they had never seen that kind of result before. So wow. it makes these changes in the body. And that's why it's so great for phobias. Like you get triggered and that's oh. coming, as I understand it, starting in the amygdala and getting you in that fight, flight, freeze response. And if you downregulate the amygdala while thinking about the snake or the picture of the snake or the way it moves or whatever it is that triggers you, you downregulate the response and in effect that disconnects that trigger in your mind from the response, the fear response. So it's great for phobias, but you know, I'm no longer in the therapy room. I'm not using it for anxiety disorders. Yeah. It's fantastic for PTSD. That's one of the places they've really studied it. Wow. But I'm taking it into an area where it really hasn't been studied, but because I know it does change the body and I've seen how it changes the clients I work with, it changes their ability to take action and move forward and get the results they're looking for. I'm not waiting for the research to catch up to me there. Yeah. So I love this. And I think, you know, the listeners are going to be the same. Like we were talking about the amygdala being the emotional heartbeat of the body, so to speak, the storage mm -hmm. place where those emotions live. We all know what that's like to be, you know, your amygdala is hijacking you. That limbic yeah. system is hijacking the emotions and you hear a siren and you react, but it's not because you're in any danger, but it's because there was a siren when you were a child and someone dropped a glass jar and then that scared you. And then there's all... Like this whole snowball effect starts to happen where the nervous system then reacts because the amygdala is feeding the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus then sends a signal downstream. And then we have that fight or flight response. So my question is, how does this decoupling of the severe or stronger, we'll call, response, how does that decoupling, we know that it happens. I guess we don't need to know mm -hmm. how it happens, but how do we know then that that decoupling or de-escalation of that heightened response is going to be longer term? Why does the body not go back to what was already mm -hmm. stored there, which is the you know crazy emotional response or trigger about mm -hmm. an event or a situation? How does that happen? I can't really answer that. Mm -hmm. What I can offer you is studies that have shown that the effects of tapping are very long lasting. So they've had people with PTSD and they did a meta-analysis or more than one meta-analysis that showed that over the course of two months to two years to even longer, the results that the symptoms are gone, they stay gone. They just don't come back. Now, I mean, nobody's gone for the whole life, 70 years or anything yet, because tapping yeah, yeah. hasn't been around that long. Yeah. But it's looking pretty good for the results holding. And that is what I have seen with my clients as well. And it might be too, Nancy, that it's just overriding. It's like overriding, like, you know, we would have in the olden days, for those of you that are not old enough to remember this, just don't listen. But Nancy and I are going <laughs> to get this part. 
When we had CDs and we used to burn CD and you had write and rewritable CDs. And oh, so yeah. we could take a CD and we could rewrite the CD and put something completely different or imprint that differently on a CD. And then we could play that, put that in the CD player and we could play whatever was on there again. So it must be like an override or a rewrite of that stored more traumatic memory with a new story, a new stored memory that lays in that amygdala and that limbic system on top of that. So that then in the future, there just may not be that same <gasps> fight or flight yeah. type response. Yeah. And I love that metaphor of rewriting because what I find is when I go looking with clients for what are the subconscious rules, blocks, limitations, fears, call them what you want to, I call them subconscious blocks. When I go looking for those and then we tap and release them, it's as if these old rules from when they were young are gone. And now the conscious things that they know about the world, about themselves, they can finally take root. Oh, I'm thinking about some sessions that we have done together. Like just right there when you said that, I'm like, oh, yeah, because then what will happen is at the end of our session together or at the end of us tapping, all of a sudden you consciously go, well, that's the dumbest thing in the world that I thought that. What is wrong yeah. with you? Why would you even think that when that could not have been on my radar before? Because exactly. I was hijacked by the emotion. <sighs> there is an actual term for that experience. It's why I take a number at the beginning. Okay, how strong does that belief feel? And, you know, it's somewhere up near 100, right? Yeah. And yeah. then we did the tapping. And then, I, so how strong is it now? And it comes way down. If the apex effect is when somebody says, oh, it's not that important. And they forget uh, in the space of just a few minutes that it had really triggered them in the past. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating. So what are the most common things that you work with? Because you just really work with business owners. Like that's yes. kind of your lane, which is what I love about you. What are the common things that you see come up over and over again in the way of limiting beliefs, things that are keeping business owners from being successful? Yeah. Like, cause we're healthcare practitioners, right? So either in right. practice or running a business in that arena. Right. Well, what I have found, and I've worked with plenty of professionals who are basically responsible for what they bring in, you know, the clients they bring in and the patients. And I've worked with others who call themselves business owners. It's the same across the board. And I've really divided it up into three categories. I call it mindset, visibility, and profitability, MVP, which works well when I'm working with MVP clubs. Anyway, but profitability pretty much is exactly what it sounds like. Making money, keeping money, allowing yourself sometimes even to spend money for people who yeah. they've got plenty and they can't allow themselves to have what they want. So it's all things money. Visibility is being willing to be more seen. And then that can be physically seen, like doing videos is a big blocker for many people. Yeah, but I've also seen it prevent people from finishing a book that they are trying to get out there in the world for their business. Mm. And I've seen it getting on podcasts and speaking and speaking from the stage, of course, too. And then there's mindset. Mindset's the catch-all for everything that isn't profitability or visibility. But I think what often comes up there is allowing yourself to have some support in the work you do, yeah. being willing to delegate some of the responsibility for things. So there's a lot around control there, but there's also some things around feeling deserving. So that comes up a lot too in the mindset world. I don't deserve to have this. I'm not good enough. Imposter syndrome will follow yeah, exactly. right in there. That's so common. So those are the buckets for it. And then within each bucket, there's some common blocks that come up a lot and some that are more specific, more individual that will come up as well. That's just so fascinating that you've seen that it's the same, you know, pretty much across the board. You know, I would agree about the lack of self-worth. Sometimes it's like confidence, but confidence can be misunderstood as I don't want to be on video, therefore I'm not confident, but it could just be a mindset over mm -hmm. in that mindset bucket, right? That yeah. lingering and crossing over into that visibility or it's impacting the visibility or and or profitability. Yep. But those are the things like when I work with doctors, almost every time they'll tell me, I know my fees aren't enough. Yes. I know. For those of you that are listening, you heard her sigh. But if you could have seen her head, it just dropped down <laughs> from her toes. She's like, oh my gosh, if I could only have a dime for every time mm -hmm. I've had this conversation. But it's really true. And that yeah. lack of value and worth is so huge. I would assume it's probably that way in other businesses as well. But you look at like a CEO of some big company 
or somebody that we look at and we think, oh, well, that person is super successful. Look at them. They've got a multi-practitioner practice. They've got two front desk, three front desk people. They're making over a million dollars a year. They have this big vendor account with a supplement company. Certainly they have it all together. No. <laughs> well, now if they do, they don't come to talk to me, but I can tell you, I've worked with people who are incredibly successful, amazing, amazing with their practices and their businesses. And they've got all these fears and these limitations in one area or more. And yeah, any of these areas can affect the other. So visibility affects profitability. Profitability can affect the mindset stuff. Yeah. And it isn't limited to people who are not in the C-suite, for sure. Yeah. C-suite all the way down. All the way down. All the way down. When we we're talking about business before we went on live here, I mentioned something about relationships, mm. personal relationships. And I can say myself, having been married for, in my first marriage was 33 plus years, and how much that the unhealthiness of that relationship impacted my ability to really thrive in my business because of some beliefs that were adopted by me. They weren't necessarily put on me, but they were adopted by me. I believed it to be true. And I didn't realize the negative impact that it was having the limiting impact, I'll say, because it's a <laughs> limiting belief on my business until you and I started to kind of work through some of those in the relationship department. And I would not have put that together because we tend to think, well, I had a fight with my spouse and I'll just leave it at the door and then I'll come to work. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't at all. And in fact, it's like on two different levels. And I'm always telling my clients, because they have their own business, because they're responsible for things, it doesn't matter if that's their personal life and this is their professional life. Their personal life, they are their business. So it comes in the door. It Absolutely. comes in the door with them. And if they had a bad phone call with their brother-in-law, we tap to release all the emotional gunk that goes with that so that they can focus and that they can do what they're here to do for their business. But like you were saying, there's also things that go really deep when they happen from yeah. particularly in childhood, but yeah. throughout life, yeah. in your personal life, that your subconscious basically generalizes it. It makes a rule about the world. And so you can't leave it at the door. It definitely is going to come into your office with you. Because it's the rule about the world or it's yeah. a rule about people. Yep. You know, this is a big generalization, but you know, for a woman who has been in an abusive relationship, her rule about the world might be all men are bad. Yep. Could Which they? is not true. We know this is not true, but for her nervous system and her brain and her amygdala, that's the rule about the lice. And so then moving forward, she's going to live out that belief in her real life. So I think I was so, I don't want to say caught off guard, but it was such a huge aha for me about how the things that had slowly kind of crept in over the years, you know, I'm not a spring chicken, but I don't feel old either. But how many things had just kind of crept in and they're like strings, they're like attached strings and they just keep you and they hold you and they prevent you from growing and going forward. And I, it can, I love this work. Well, and it can be really challenging to see it in yourself because first of all, you know, you're just swimming in it. It's right. the fish so, in the water, not knowing that they're the yep. wa breathing water. But it's also that when you've got blocks like that, you can disagree with them consciously. Like I had one client who she was lesbian, married to the love of her life, and she wasn't making enough money in her business. And I had her rate the statement, I'm supposed to be taken care of by a man. Now, consciously, she left that one behind way, way in the past. But when she rated it, it came up really powerful. And she said, I don't believe it, but I know there's something there. And so that's the challenging bit about what I do is to uncover that stuff and then release it. And there's so many different layers. Yeah. You know, so is this EFT situation a one and done? It can be. Let me put it that way. It can be for somebody who just I see where I want to take my practice to. I want to just get rid of whatever is keeping me from that point. And then I've seen people who do that. They get there, they're very happy with it. But I've also worked with the people who are like no, I want more. I know that I meant for more. I can keep doing more. 
And the truth is, as you release some things and you up level, you can go until you hit the next ceiling, the next yeah. block yeah. that's going to keep you stuck, keep you plateaued. So for someone who wants to keep going, they're going to want the coach that's there all the time for them. Yeah. And yeah. you really, for my money, you got to have the strategy coach, the one who's teaching you how to do the next level and the next level and the next level. And you got to have someone in your back pocket like me who's going to go for the subconscious blocks wow. that won't let you have that next level. Right. And this is why I wanted to have this conversation with you today, because the marriage of those two, like me as that business coach, and then you as that, I don't want to say mindset coach, because that's not what this is, but it's that person who's going to help you get rid of the things that are all twisting you up at your ankles that ends up in your head, you know, <laughs> all the justification, the excuses, well, I'll never be, or I don't deserve to have, or I'll never be good at marketing. I'll never be good at social media. I'm never going to be good running people. I'll never be good at hiring a staff. I always hire wrong. Those are all those things that get all tangled up and they just keep us from moving forward. But I can say, I mean, I'm pretty much an open book and the transformation that I've had in working with you has been nothing short of remarkable. And I look at myself and I think, where did she go? That Rhonda, she gone. <laughs> She's a new one here. And mm -hmm. the new one is better and the new one is freer. And the new one says, hmm, I think I want to do that. I'm going to go do that. But before I would have said, I'm not good enough. I'm not going to do it right. I'm going to make mistakes. People are going to look at me and they're going to see that I made a mistake and then they're going to judge me. Now, I don't give a rat's rear end about that. I don't care. <laughs> If you don't like me, bye -bye. see you later. Yeah. But that's so freeing. It's just been just incredibly freeing for me. So for that, yeah. I'm incredibly grateful to you. Oh, it has been my absolute pleasure. I mean, this is what I live for. It is so fun to get in there periodically. I'll walk over to my husband and I'll swear. I, I won't swear here, but I'll say, I do I think magic. <laughs> because <laughs> something has shifted for someone and now they are free to go do big, the big things big they've been thing. seeing. Yes. Yes. So how would someone work with you? Someone said, I raise my hand. Like if you're listening, I'm like in the car, raise your hand. I need some help. Or you know that you need some help, but how would someone work with you? How would they get in touch with you? Well, there's a couple of things. One is if they're ready, like let's talk right now, just shoot me an email tapping at unblockresults.com. So Tapping, T A P P I N G, at Unblock Results, U N B L O C K R E S U L T S dot com. Got it. And we'll set up a time just to talk about what's going on with your practice, what might be getting in the way, and if tapping is a fit for you. Yeah. If you want to just dip your toe in a bit first, though, I do have a quiz you could take that will help you recognize whether you have more blocks in the mindset, the visibility, or the profitability areas. Nice. And then once you've taken that, you get access to three tap-along videos I've recorded, one for each area, for a common block in each one of those areas. And you can tap along with it and just feel what that's like to do that and see how that feels. So that would be at unblockresults.com slash clinical. Okay, got it. So I will put your email in the show notes and then I will put the quiz or the unblockresults.com forward slash clinical in the show notes as well. So for those of you listening, you want to go there, you can grab those show notes and click on that link. But I would highly suggest and recommend without even the littlest bit of hesitation to at least reach out and have a conversation with Nancy because she's completely changed my life. And I don't say that. I mean, I'm picky. Most of the time I do podcasts on my own. I don't bring a lot of guests on and it's because I want to be able to vouch for their credibility and what they do. But I have been working with Nancy for quite some time now and I'm a fan. I'm your girl, Sienna, over here. <laughs> Thank you, Rhonda. I am honored. Well, it's been a pleasure to chat with you. And I hope for those of you that are listening that this has been inspirational to you in that you know now that there's hope. You don't have to be stuck in a place where you have that imposter syndrome or you're feeling like you're never going to be good enough or you're not going to do it right or your practice can never be successful. You're never going to know social media or whatever the reason is. My family's never going to support me. Whatever it might be, I can tell you that there is hope for you and you really truly can take 
clothes off. You can take the layers off. You can just peel it off and then rewrite your CD and write a new story on there and disengage, unhook that story that you have stuck in that amygdala in the limbic system, and then let that hypothalamus, that HPA axis begin to signal correctly so that you're not in that fight or flight response like you would be otherwise. So Nancy, thank you so much for oh. everything from the bottom of my heart, like for me, for our relationship together and how much you have helped me and continue to help. And then also thank you for being on the podcast and being willing to share what you do with the people that I love here in this arena. Thank you, Rhonda. All right. Take care, everyone. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye.